Good morning and welcome to Go Out Politics Live. This morning we're joined by our biggest panel yet of four, which we're delighted. So first of all, we've got Pauline O'Reilly, the new Green candidate for Galway City for, for the for Galway City West, obviously constituency and a city councillor. We have um, former mayor and county councillor Thomas Welby, uh, former PD, now independent. We have Derek Hamilton, uh, former and I'd say current chair of Onteshka, and we have social commentator um, Tommy Roddy, and now, of course, my co-host, Neil Burlicon. So, good morning, Neil. Yeah, good morning, Mike. I'm delighted to be joined here today by the esteemed panel, and we're going to be discussing the UK election and how that might affect us here in Galway, but also just generally discussing the election. So, it's sort of a Christmas special and a UK um, election special. So, I mean, I mean we might start um, start with Pauline. Do you want to introduce yourself and just give us your views on uh, on uh, the UK election and how it might affect us, Pauline? Sure, well, uh, thanks. I suppose, Mike, you gave me a bit of an introduction there. I'm um, the candidate for Galway West in the general election um, coming up, and, and who knows when that'll be. We do know when the UK election is, so I suppose we get right, right down to talking about that. Um, I would have hoped that the w we would have seen more of a shift um, at this stage in the polls. It's looking <laughs> like there's very, very little difference than where, the, where we were at the start of this campaign. Um, from the Greens' perspective, I suppose, probably not a huge amount of change, although we, w we would be hopeful in one or two constituencies. Um, it doesn't look like the Liberal Democrats have, have made the kind of inroads that we would have expected, and considering the fact that we, we were making a pact in, in many of those constituencies to try and yeah, and Pauline, the, the Greens seem to be sort of standing down in the north in, in some of their stronger seats. I mean, wha what's that about? Well, there's there's it's not about anything other than trying to win a seat for for those who want to remain in, in the European it's Union. It's about Brexit. It's really, it's all about Brexit mm. at this stage. Um, we did very well in the local elections. We did very well in the European elections. So we were particularly strong. But as you know, with the system of fir first past the post yeah. in the UK elections, it makes it incredibly difficult for a small party. Uh, um, we got half a million votes in 2017 in the in the UK elections, the Westminster elections. Um, you know, the Tories only needed 42,000 to get for e for every seat. So actually, <laughs> we're completely underrepresented in terms of actual politicians, and that's the difficulty that the UK faces really. The politicians aren't representing the real issues for people on the yeah, ground. Yeah, because that's, that's a very interesting point, because you saw the Greens did extremely well, and so did the um, Liberal Democrats in the um, European elections, which is under proportional, it is proportional, um, whereas people obviously, you, you <coughs> see very much the polarisation. I think the Tories got 9% or something ridiculous in that election, and now you see sort of because of the first-past-the-post system, it's very much polarising back to the two big parties in the UK, isn't it? That's right, and and you know when there was when there was um, a chance in the past to change that, that didn't happen for the UK, and um, it's really unfortunate. I speak to many people in the UK, particularly members of ours, I suppose, um, who are disappointed with not being able to vote for their preferred candidate, which is a Green, and um, and uh, you've mentioned there Neil in the North. Um, Obviously, the leader of the of the Northern Irish Greens has stepped back to try to um, get a, um, alliance in there. So you know, it, it's it's a difficult position for sure with the electoral system. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting eh, with the Greens how they do. So Thomas, what would you think of the election? What are your thoughts? Uh, well, uh, <coughs> you know, I unfortunately I think um, um, Boris Johnson is com is coming very strong and you know I don't have a, a lot of respect for him really to be honest with you I think he's uh, a lot of bluster I think he's a real Trump sort of a, a person and you know I think the body politics is the worst for well, this that's a kind of an anti-Trump thing oh gotcha yeah. no, <laughs> that's a problem that's not a problem I get I'd, uh, I'd, uh, I wouldn't have I'd, I'd just I believe you know I think they've done extreme damage to the body politics you know you know I'm going on 17 years in politics now I mean you don't know what's the truth and what's the lie anymore 
that's that's the problem. And I, I mean, Donald would agree with that, though, wouldn't he? Well, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, he's a he's brilliant at it. You know, I I, I mean, you know, and mm. and I think you know Johnson is kind of has kind of has, has he's gone into the English version of that. And uh, you know, I mean, it is it's a very poor system in relation to the first past the post. It doesn't give yeah. a, a fair <coughs> representation. Well, as but Pauline says, it doesn't have the small parties at all. No, but I, but there is not a strategic. Um, Maneuvering going on this this term, like in relation to the Northern Ireland and in England, you know whether it's going to have an impact. Because I mean, if if um, if the Conservatives get in with an overall majority, that's that's it. It's game set and match. Can know? you imagine how many elections in a row Fianna Fáil would have won in Ireland if we had first passed the post? Oh yeah, um yeah yeah. I mean, it's just it's a very unfair system, you know. But I mean, it suits them uh, in you know it suits them in England. On you know, I think there's only been one fairly made. There's only been one coalition. Uh, Grouping that I can remember in in modern in modern times, and and okay, you've had the confidence and supply over the last while there with the uh, with the unionists, but yeah. it's uh, it's a very it's it's a very divided system. It but is. England is a very divided country. It is. And just to bring in Derek there, because Derek, of course, is from Scotland originally, and I'm sure Derek will give us the perspective from there. Well, uh, my problem is that I've been 40 years uh, away from the UK uh, since I came to Galway in '79, and uh, my family is wide, widely spread. <laughs> Uh, so I don't get to go back that often. Uh, Any time I have been back, uh, I can see for myself uh, how divided the, the, the country is. Um, mm. It always was uh, uh, regionally. Uh, uh, the whole issue of Brexit seems to be a, a big issue uh, in, in the south, uh, but it's an even bigger issue for those parts of England that have been neglected since ever Thatcher was there and the loss of traditional industries, the steel industry, the mining industry, all of those uh, 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 issues uh, have left the country so divided it's really unimaginable uh, the amount of deprivation that there are or there is in, in parts of the country. So this election, uh, uh, it's a Brexit election. Uh, how Brexit came about is something that we all puzzle <coughs> about because um, who 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 began the the, the whole process of uh, uh, initiating um, this leave culture? Um, we know here in Ireland how much uh, uh, or how dependent uh, we became on on European funding for the roads and for uh, schools and all the rest of it. We 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 we've done very well out of Europe, uh, and as an agricultural country uh, uh, traditionally, not so much mm. now, of course. Uh, with FDI and a lot of American business here. Um, What's FDI, Derek? Foreign Direct Investment. Uh, the, the, the fact that we mm. have, uh, particularly here in Galway, we have a great dependence on uh, foreign investment into industries, the medical device sector mm. uh, uh, and, and high-tech um, industries uh, in Galway are particularly important and are very big employers. So the, the outcome of the English election or the British election uh, uh, because Scotland is a different story and of course Wales is, uh, has its own share of uh, uh, difficulties as well um, but I, I, I just I can't understand it at this distance as I say I don't go back very often even though I like to keep mm. in touch with what's going on uh, it, 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 it's, it, it's just unfathomable yeah. that but people could vote to leave the, EU, uh, the EU uh, rather than reform but Derek, there seems to be a very different dynamic in Scotland as opposed to England. Oh, absolutely. And obviously there was a 63% remain vote in Scotland. So, mm. you know, people are feeling that their will isn't being absolutely. carried forward. But in England, um, very much it's it's the opposite, you know, that people are feeling that Brexit has to be done. But is that message, in your view, carrying through in Scotland? The Brexit must be done. Or Boris Johnson seems to answer every question is, get Brexit done. You know, it... it it seems to be the answer to housing. It seems to be the answer to, um, you know, to the NHS uh, yeah. problems with, you know, it seems to be his view. We have to get <coughs> Brexit done mantra, yeah. before anything. I mean, it's it's a, it's a great, it sounds like sort of a Harry Potter phrase to me. Yeah. You know, that let's get Brexit Derek done. Derek well versed We're in it, Harry it, Potter. So. Magic. It, it, the, the whole thing about Scotland, of course, is that over the last 40, 50 years, there's been this independence movement, which has grown. Uh, uh, I think the last time I was in Scotland was about 20 years ago. Oh well. uh, and and uh, there were there were um uh, 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 u
now the building uh, 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 and uh, they've eventually w got their way in as much as uh, Scotland has always had control of its own uh, funding to a certain extent it's its health service its transport services uh, and uh, local uh, services uh, have been um, managed fr from Edinburgh itself so it, it's quite different from the rest of the UK but mm. the, the move towards full independence which is uh, is likely to come down the track in the next four or five years because they're looking yeah. for another vote, which they probably will get. I, I, I would yeah. believe. Yeah. Could we bring in Tommy here? Because Tar Tommy, you've been very silent so far. But um, do do you have views on how um, you know the British election is likely to affect us here in Galway? Yeah, well, I'm what you might call a bit of a political anorak if I'm not <laughs> following. That's why you're here, Tommy. Yeah, if I'm so not your commentator, Tommy. If I'm not following. Um, politics or if I'm not taking part in politics I'm following it and I find the, the British situation even though it has it will have major implications for Ireland from a distance I, I, I find it fascinating and I, I think this, the saddest thing there's a lot of sad things about it but one of the sad things is that we're just over six weeks from the UK leaving getting Brexit done as Boris keeps saying and the reality is we do not know the effects that it will have in Ireland because at the moment this is just a withdrawal agreement and even in the withdrawal agreement you know there's, there's a lot of um, fine detail that needs to be ironed out for instance I was uh, watching Sophie Ridge this morning Boris Johnson was on and um, one, of, one of the things that's very contentious at the moment is what's called the border down the Irish Sea and Sophie Ridge was asking Boris Johnson on the program um, because Boris Johnson says there will be no um, customs checks between Great Britain and Northern Ireland and some internal documents in the, the UK Treasury Department have actually some leaked documents have actually stated that there will be um, there will be checks and Boris Johnson has categorically said this morning as he's always saying that there won't be checks but the reality is none of this is tied down the negotiations on the proper deal will actually start once the UK have left and, and another farce what I, what I call a farce is that Boris Johnson keeps saying that everything will be done and dusted by the end of the year absolutely no way the EU uh, Canada deal took seven years to negotiate and that was done solely on goods so I mean there's so much that we don't know at this stage and I mean the prospect of an no deal is still there which is very frightening for Ireland yeah, if I, I could just make the point, you're, you're making an interesting point there Tommy because um, I'd like to go back to polling because one of the things that um, seems to be highlighted in this particular UK election is the truth is very much lacking from politics I mean Tommy's pointing this out, we've had all this thing in the UK election with the nurses, how many nurses are they going to employ, how many hospitals are they going to build, etc. And But it looks like, um, you know, are, are you going to have a border down the Irish Sea? The, it seems that there are just complete and utter falsehoods being peddled. Um, it seems to me, you know, that that's the way I look at it. But is that something that, that you would see sort of creeping into Irish politics? Is it something that happens here locally? Is it something, and I'll ask the same question to Tom as a sitting politician, is it a creeping, you know, a creeping thing in, in politics in general, or is it something particular to the UK? I, I, I don't think it's particular to the UK, I suppose, yeah, on the on Sophie Ridge programme this morning, again, on the hospitals issue, um, that they'd, he'd, he'd have, 40 new hospitals and upgrades to 20 more um, and why why the Tories haven't been able to find that money up to now is a mystery to everyone um, I think it I think I'm hoping that we're seeing the kind of the bottom of, of the trough in a way because I think that young you I know you're shaking <laughs> shaking your head there <laughs> I think um, from speaking to young people, there's, there was a particular um, program where they had the reaction of young people following one of the debates in the UK, and uh, there maybe it was a couple of weeks ago. And I think that young people recognise that they're not being told the truth. Um, so we might think that everybody's following social media, they're retweeting um, some glib comment, but actually, I do think that young people are more discerning 
than we give but them that's, credit that's to. That's being reflected in the opinion polls now. I mean, <laughs> maybe the opinion. Oh, we have a we have a song from Mike here. <laughs> <laughs> Getting into the Christmas spirit here, Mike. Yeah. But, but look, I mean, that doesn't seem to be reflected in the opinion polls. But maybe are, are, are they telling? No, the I truth? no. Look, I I I'm not I'm not going to to lie about it. We're we're right in the middle of it of the worst of it. We absolutely are, and the opinion polls will continue to show that. But I do think that we will see a turning. That that's my hope that we will see a turning over over the next year. It won't be this election probably. Um, however, it'll be quite interesting to see. We, we saw that nobody predicted how well Labour did the last time. I'm not saying that Labour are going to necessarily turn things around. They're, you know, they're they're so far behind now in the opinion polls. But there are a lot of seats there that there's very little between between who wins. You know, it's within five percent, and we don't know until until Friday when people go in to cast their votes will they actually have some kind of a, a, a mm. you know a crisis as an existential crisis moment and mm. feel actually it's not in the best interests of the world and I mean I, I know I sound probably over hopeful um, but I do genuinely well, you're obviously not a conservative fan, <laughs> judging by the way you're, you're talking anyway no. so Neil do you have figures for the last uh, UK election uh, percentages for turn turnout um, I, I, I'm not sure what the turnout figures are. Um, I think it was around sixty percent. I could be I could be wrong. I, I, I don't know actually off the Do top you think of my it'll head. be higher this time? It's it's hard to say, but I, I certainly think um if I was well I don't know, I've heard lots of voters in the UK um suggesting that they're not going to turn out because they're too confused. So I think I think we could see a downturn <coughs> in voting. I, I don't know. I yeah. mean it's it's like to trying know. to predict the weather really, yeah. um to be honest, Mike. Um, but but I'd be interested just to go back, um, you know, to d explore the interest about truth with Tom, because I mean you've been on the Galway County Council for quite a long time now, mm. and I mean have you seen, um, you know, well, the level I, of truth or integrity? Say, I suppose if you look at the referendum in England uh, about leaving, it was more like a general election, because mm. that was more based on the hospitals and things like that, yes. and it was immig immigration was the big, the big thing, and I think a lot of the young people, you know, just didn't turn out, and now they're sorry. You know, I mean, that's the problem with the referendum. They, the, the, the mm. people that normally vote are the elderly people, and they wanted out, and the younger people didn't. So that's the problem. Uh, I think in if you're saying scraping the bottom of the barrel, I think we're only splashing around at the top of the top of the barrel at the minute because I, I think um, you know, th there's probably going to be um, if if the Conservatives do get the overall majority. And you know, to a certain extent, the unions were kind of the vanguard there for a while. They were kind of keeping them in check. Um, the Conservatives, Johnson will leave. I mean, the reason that Johnson has what he's saying, get Brexit done, it just throws off everything else. You don't have to talk about uh, hospitals. You don't have to talk about employment. You don't have to talk about the after effects of coming out of a big block like Europe and seeing, are you going to have a major dip? Because mm. I expect that they'll have a major dip. So, I mean, if they're going to be building hospitals, where are they going to get the money from? Mm. You know, that's the reality. And what I think, uh, if you were to compare Ireland to England, I think, you know, I mean, the figures that we're talking about in Ireland are an awful lot smaller in relation to the money that we, we go around with uh, compared to England. And I think England is, you'll probably have to hide things an awful lot more. I don't think you're getting that anything close to that level in Ireland. I mean, if you're telling blatant lies in Ireland, you're eventually, <laughs> you are going to get yeah. caught out. You know, what what you have seen in yeah. <laughs> what you have seen in the UK is a record number of young people registering, and the interesting thing is that those figures aren't reflected in the polls, and the reason they're not actually is because of the demographic. The way would the they polls be are liberal conducted. Democrats? Do you well, think? who knows what they are? But the, the likelihood. Green. I mean, I've certainly found in the past that if people register to vote, they tend to do so. Yeah. Do you know? It's you don't you don't go to the effort of filling in forms if you're not prepared to actually fill in an X on the ballot paper. So. It really well, is, is the most difficult election I've ever come mm. across to predict what the hell is going to happen. Well, I mean, if you, but if you look at the at the results of the referendum in England, I mean, it was really South wanted to stay and everything, every place else wanted to go. Yeah. And that's what wasn't it, Tom, that a lot of the older generation wanted out and they were sick of Europe and yeah. a lot of the younger generation, you say, just didn't bother voting. Yeah, but you, I mean, you had the situation that, I mean, Johnson had two speeches, one for he did. leave, that's one right. for staying. Mm. I mean, that shows the... The you know if that's the way if the man was in that if if he was in he, he you know Johnson is for Johnson yeah and and he's not same as Trump is for Trump <laughs> you know. so oh, we he was for high we could be facing a situation here now um, we're likely to have an election in in Ireland um, in in March May. or April say, yeah. next year 
And we could be facing a very unstable UK, no matter what the result of the general election. And, it, it, you know, that, that, that may very well have effect on us here. You know, I mean, I, I don't know what people think. I mean, I suppose it's, it's again, like trying to predict the weather. But, I mean, how, how, is, how is it going to go? I mean, how is that going to affect people? For example, I, I talk, sorry for going to polling again, but, mm. I mean, you know, the Greens are riding very high in the polls in, in Ireland at the moment, um, ahead of the Labour Party and had a great by-election uh, result. But that, that might completely disappear in a, in a you know, a chaotic situation. The, the sort of emphasis on climate change and, and Green New Deal and so on might disappear um, if we're facing chaos uh, across the water. I, I, look, I think the reality is that if you speak to most people, I've, I've done, I can continue, I've, I've canvassed three times this week, mm -hmm. so I know the feeling on the ground. I also canvassed very heavily for Joe Bryan in, in Fingal and, and we won that by-election seat. Um, you know, you still look at the tallies and you'll see will see people there voting for Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael, and it hasn't changed that much. I mean, we mm. are talking about, yes, huge increases, but it's coming from a low base, you know. Um, will it change? I think I think that people are have an appetite for something that's more than themselves, um, more than their local interests. But I, I do think that when resources are tight, that people do... Um, try to hold on to what they can the for themselves and um, and I think that that's a natural position and I think that what our message is is that actually it you know being green or or w th and this will be the same for all of the sm smaller parties probably mm -hmm. that um, Social Democrats probably do. you know that actually doing what's right globally it can also be what's right locally and I think that that's uh, that's the message really and I I hope that people will will hear that, but I think um, you're right that there's a chaos there that we really don't know, mm. um, absolutely. And I think that we won't even know when the UK elections um, come about because it's so chaotic. And first past the post, we don't really get a proper feeling for how each individual is feeling. Just, just to bring in Tom Willoughby there, because as a member of, of, of a, a small party who achieved a lot, <coughs> or certainly were very influential, maybe it's a better way to put it, I see heads nodding here. We're both uh, showing our biases, uh, biases here, Mike, uh, now. Well but anyway. well, yes, yes. Uh, I wonder what Tom thinks of what might happen in Ireland in May. Or well, yeah, look, <coughs> you know, the reality is people don't fall, you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, like in relation to people voting, you know, and the big win, what had happened was... Um, the Greens and, and Social Democrats, when the election comes, people are, they say at that stage, I ran two general elections and, you know, I ran one is in the party and one is an independent. Yeah. And, you know, people say, look, OK, we know you, we respect you and you'll do well locally. But what happens is they say, well, we, you know, some people don't want to lose you. Yeah? Yeah. And some people say, well, we're looking at national, we're looking at, at a form of government, not, not putting a representative to 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 the doll and that's you know I, I i've come across that that sort of situation the, the only thing i'll just say that i suppose we might be in a slightly but if the conservatives get um the overall majority you know if you go back eight months or well so not even eight months four or five months mm. we were talking about a crash out deal and i think the crash out deal was the th that that was really driving to the edge of the cliff like whereas you know, if they go and they're they're saying, okay, we are leaving, and and they do, it, at least you should get an you'll get some sort of an orderly, uh, an orderly leave, and I think you know that won't be a major shock to to the Irish economy, and I think, um, you know, I think that's where the likes of Galway. I mean, we're going to have we're going to be the only English speaking country in the EU after. Mm. After well, after excluding Malta, of course. Well, we well Malta, <laughs> and Malta. He's a great man on stats, isn't he? And Malta, you know, the night I sorry to any Maltese people watching. The night I stayed up watching the referendum, Malta came in ninety eight percent, I think, to stay in Europe. So yeah. <laughs> where are they? But it's a case that I mean, we, you know, we're going to have to build <coughs> on, on what our strengths are, yeah. and you know, I don't see it all doom and gloom. And um, but you know, I see the British economy is going to hit, get an awful lot more shock than the Irish economy. Yeah. You know, because yeah. like the people that are have to deal in Europe, you know, they can't be in England. And, and, and there will be an orderly two two year or three year period. I mean, okay, we can't cater for an awful lot of companies coming over with, with our housing crisis and everything like that at the moment. But eventually, you know, potentially we could be a, a benefit, a be, you know, be a benefit for us, like, you know.
Tommy, what what about yourself? I mean, the you know, you're you're a, an avid watcher of all these things. I mean, how, how would you sort of picture it? I mean, if as we expect, there will be some sort of chaotic result. I mean, there might be a conservative landslide. There might be a you know, there might be a bit of a hung car parliament. Who knows? Even Labour could get a majority. I, I don't think the Liberal Democrats are going to get their mm -hmm. prime minister as they plan. But you'd never know. Stranger things have happened. Not yeah, much. That would be very strange. Yeah. Very, that would be a very strange one. But, but I mean, assuming that there's still some level of chaos, mm -hmm. whether Boris Johnson puts through his deal and then we get into the negotiations about the European mm -hmm. situation or Labour get their referendum. I mean, how do you think that's going to affect our general election um, coming down the line? Yeah, well, uh, it's chaos is the only word for the situation in the UK. Whatever effect that will have on in Ireland, um, I'm not sure. But Tom was saying there about that there will be a, an orderly uh, Brexit under under the present situation. Like that's not at all guaranteed because this is only the withdrawal. I mean, the prospect of um, a no deal Brexit is still on the cards. But my prediction from the very start of this process, despite uh, Boris Johnson's bluster, and bluster is the only word for it, I mean, there's no, there's no hard facts behind anything he says. But my own prediction is, m well, originally I thought that maybe there might be a second referendum in the UK, and that that and that the whole thing would be reversed. I don't think that's going to happen at this stage. Um, definitely, the UK will leave, and as the polls <coughs> are looking at the moment, there was a UK. You, you go poll on Sky News this morning giving the Conservatives a 20 seat majority which will allow them to leave on the 31st of January but my own prediction is that the UK will be very closely aligned to the EU um, despite all that Boris Johnson is saying because Boris Johnson has to say these things to keep his hard Brexiteers on board but as we mentioned earlier the only thing that Boris Johnson is concerned about the only job that he's concerned about is his own job and once he, he's a I've, I've an article here from the Tribune last week that Harry McGee but and you're, you're like um, you're like Jeremy Corbyn here with your <laughs> <laughs> yeah but um, uh, yeah, Har Harry McGee called um, Boris Johnson a practice liar now he wouldn't be the only person to refer to him as that I mean Boris Johnson he was up at the um, the DUP conference last year and he promised everything to the DUP to be no border down the Irish Sea and what does he do he just ditches them whenever it suits him so regarding the whole situation in in Britain I believe that um, there will be a deal all right you know even though the prospect of a no deal is still on the cards but Boris Johnson will use that and then he will make compromises with the EU because he has to because the EU and the UK are such close trading partners that they have to have a close alignment and that in lots of ways it'll be that, that phrase Brexit in name only and your question about what effect will that have on Ireland in lots of ways what, what goes on in England you know we have to do our own thing here and, and we will so we have no control over it so the situation is that you know in in in, in practice in, in the immediate effect for the general election i don't think it will have a, have a huge effect on the local politics here in ireland okay just back to that tommy makes a very very good point about the referendum <clears throat> and we all know what would happen if it happened in ireland we had Nice and we had Lisbon, so you don't get the vote you want, you go back in again. I'd like to ask the panel, uh, how do you think a referendum would go in Britain if it was taken this morning? Pauline? I mean, I suppose you, you'd you have to look at how the Conservatives are polling and how Labour is polling and think that it probably wouldn't be much different, particularly when you think of the fact that actually a lot of Labour voters voted to leave as well. So um, it, it's very <coughs> hard to see it being much different. In fact, um, yeah, I, I, th that that's all. It's, that's that's what I'll say but about that. But you'd be that. dealing with a different referendum, and this is the yes, thing that, that I, I think bothers it, me. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's what happened in Nice. It was actually a different vote. Yeah, it wasn't for yeah. exactly the same thing. And what you'd I be dealing with is an appallingly bad deal, probably from many people's mm -hmm. point of view in Britain. Um, I think know, that that nuance remain. is often lost, though. You know, the more complicated the question, the more likely people are to either not turn out. Or, I, I mean, yeah. yes, we should have, we should 
be really putting to the people what actually the deal is so that they can make a proper informed discussion. And I think that this is a, a larger problem with politics, that nuance is lost yeah. and how we reach people to really have a proper participative um, approach to politics. I don't think we've I don't think we're there yet. Um, and that's the difficulty. That's that would be the difficulty with having that kind of a referendum, which is what we'd like to see, which is, is a fully informed one. Well, we probably, I think, most people in Ireland would like to see the UK remain probably. Oh, in, absolutely, in w- without a Union. shadow of a doubt. Now, yeah. I, I, I'd agree with what Tommy is saying that we really don't know the full impacts. I mean, we certainly know it'll have a de- it'll have a deep impact on agriculture, um, and already it has had because we rely so heavily on that globalised market, which obviously is is the wrong way to go anyway, in my view. Um, but there are other things which which Tom has alluded to there, that there are actu- there may be, we may be beneficiaries in other ways. And I think particularly in Galway, actually, because we have, um, you know, we, we have different kind of industries here. We also have tourism. Um, mm. We have greenways that we haven't properly explored all of all of that actually is a way that we could actually um, encourage um, encourage more people to come to Ireland, and mm. I think that they will find themselves blocked out of tourism mm. quite significantly in the UK, <coughs> and we Absolutely. could we could pick up on that. So, Very Derek, do you want to take that yeah. one up? No, I, it, the really I want to make a point about this whole thing about deals. It deals and business and tourism and uh, and, and everything else. We're not talking about what the effect of Brexit is going to have on ordinary people. Uh, and, and I think the ordinary people in the UK and here in Ireland will, will see the difference. Oh, Mike and his Christmas uh, music the, again. Uh, just thought a little interlude there, folks. <laughs> the, 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 the Keeps you on your toes, Derek. With, with the whole thing about... Technology is great. Social, social, uh, uh, social issues is, is, is being brushed over because if Brexit goes through, which are, we all expect it, it, it will, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, um, those areas of the UK that I spoke about earlier that have been deprived for years, for 40 years, and more than that since the war nearly, uh, they're going to find e- even harder. Uh, 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 and I can see if so Brexit sure. goes through, if Brexit goes through in the way that it's being portrayed, uh, uh, and, and the deals are going to come after, that the, the deals won't, they won't do anybody any good uh, normal ordinary people the, the working class let's put it like that because this class system still exists in the UK whether you like it or not uh, and um, the three big issues health housing uh, and education that, that the, the conservative government will, will, will find it much easier if, if, if they if they succeed and if they win the election Mm. Uh, you'll find that student uh, fees will increase. You'll find that this promise of hospitals now, 60 hospitals, there's only six that have been costed and, and are in the planning system. So I don't know where he gets 60 from. Uh, 40, uh, I think it is, he's saying. Well, you know, uh, 60 was quoted in one paper. Was it? But uh, the, 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 the problem we have, which is allied to our own problem here, is, is that um, our own government, not so many years ago, decided to give tax incentives to the private hospital uh, operators uh, to encourage privatisation of uh, the hospital sector here. And, and we have seen the outcome of that now with, with, with um, business people uh, in control of, of the private um, hospitals. But we're still seeing a decline in, in the services uh, in our own public mm. uh, hospitals, which are getting worse with queues uh, at the ED and, and even people on the list waiting for operations yeah. not getting those operations so uh, the impact of Brexit is going to be far and wide and it's going to impact on, on, on us here as well because uh, yeah. there is a fallout. I'd, I'd like to bring Tom um, back to the Mike's original question which is the you know whether he thinks it would be any, any different if there was a referendum as Labour are proposing it in the UK, if, if there well, is the result in that Can way. I just say, I think, you know, looking back on it, I think the referendum really wasn't about the issue in England. Mm. And the referendum really should have, have had two, there should have been two strands to it. One was, do you want to leave? And the other one, do you, you know, should have been a case then, if you want to leave, 
will we bring back what the leave up what's what the leave um implications are going to be you know the people's vote again because yeah. i think you see referendums are never about referendums and <laughs> and and particularly solution to an irish problem but the thing and an Eng, an english, this is an english solution to an english, english problem referendum i mean that was the first referendum in 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 was it in over 40 years in yeah, they don't tend to be very good at referendums no. in the so, UK. So, I mean, you can look... I mean, there, we there, have was the there was a Scottish vote, obviously, locally there was in the Scotland. Scottish vote, yeah. But that was a clear... That the Scottish vote was... People knew exactly what that was, you know, about that. Yeah, about there was legislation was behind that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but I think, you see, what happened is... I mean, you know, you know, the silly situation of bent bananas and stuff like that. I mean, it was absolutely crazy. And it was, you know, what it re where all this came from is a divided Conservative Party and f that have been there for so long you know even back to maggie thatcher's time on the basis you know th they felt that we can always do better without europe <coughs> okay and what it is is that it, it just festered inside the conservative party and then i suppose it got to the stage that cameron said okay look you've been asking about this for so long we're going to give it to you it was probably the well, biggest did the media have a big role in this because i mean there was many headlines in the sun newspaper in particular which mm. were were sort of deriding the eu and the Conservatives were very happy to blame the European Union for things that they were actually course, responsible for themselves. But, but look, we do it in Ireland. <laughs> we, we blame the EU, EU. I mean, I, I know this for years. I mean, in the environmental designations, things like that. The environmental designations, what you're <coughs> given is parameters by Europe. And it's it's Irish it's it's Ar people in Ireland that actually designate the the la implement it, and that's the thing. It's you're just given fairly broad parameters, and you said this is what we want. And 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 but can I just say one uh, area that is absolutely going to be decimated if England leaves the EU without an orderly is agriculture in Northern Ireland. That is going to be yeah. wiped off the map. And and you know it, the crazy scenario about it is. Some of the people up there, I d I, they don't, they're sleepwalking into into a situation that they're not aware of. I mean, I was at a, a, a conference in relation to Brexit. I think a high 80 percent uh, for every pound in Northern Ireland, it's it's in the high 80s that they get European uh, funding. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, these people are just going to, they're they're going to the, the ones falling off the cliff edge. Yeah. And, you know, this is the, the unfortunate message has never got back. And that's what I think the, uh, yes, and that's what should have been done is there should have been, okay, we'll have a referendum on a kind of a broad brush situation. We'll have a vote on a broad brush. Do you want to leave Europe? And then you will uh, coming back to you, if you s you're happy with this, we'll be coming back to you. What is the implications of leaving? And Would it be fair to say, Tom, that like in Ireland we're more educated about referenda when they come up, as in Britain? Because I, I believe that the day after the referendum people were saying, what does Brexit mean? And you had Bob Geldof out there going up and down the Thames saying, you know, it's not a good idea. They weren't listening to Bob. Yeah. But you see, that's the problem. It's, it's, and it's kind of, I think it kind of went into a kind of a herd mentality. Such a herd the mentality. that have already left the yeah. UK, the motor, the motor. Right, that's right. They, they, get, they can't get out fast enough. Yeah. I mean, you look at Nissan in the north. Nissan and is the is it seven yeah. and a half thousand jobs? Yeah, that, that's the thing that I find fascinating because, I mean, we hear endlessly <coughs> about um, how well the UK is doing economically. And yet, if you look at the, the actual trading figures, um, oh. you know, the, the actual trading figures in the European Union, it's actually doing probably about third worst of any of the economies. And people are sort of saying, um, you know, they seem to be unchallenged. I mean, the Conservatives seem to be saying, well, look, haven't we got a great economy and you need yeah. the great economy? But there, there seems to be reluctance for anybody to talk down the economy, um, even the Labour Party. But, but I mean, the figures don't bear out what people are actually saying. Yeah, but can I just say that, you know, the, um, you know, I think at this stage we need Brexit. I think we, we, we need, need Brexit. We need Brexit. I think we need England to leave because I think it's gone so divided and so uh, I think because you know what's what the next thing is going to happen if England stays now and if, if they're not willing partners the next thing they'll start into the European Parliament because I mean they have a large amount of MPs in there mm -hmm. and, they, and they're going to start contaminating the European Parliament to the same extent that they've contaminated their own uh, Parliament. I don't think they'll get away with that. Well no but there'll there, still be I mean <laughs> you still have Farage I mean Farage Farage has floated around he's you know he never got elected to anything. Uh, well, you they know, got elected to the European yeah, Parliament. European music. But that's probably because they said, well, we'll probably send him over there. And <laughs> <laughs> because is that what the European Parliament is about? Get rid of your awkward politicians. We don't want them here. We don't want them here and let him mess them up over there. But I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, how popular was he in his own country? 
Did no. you, he didn't even get elected in his own country. No. I think he's... <laughs> Is it nine elections or something here? Yeah. Exactly. Could, could we could we possibly turn to the issue of Northern Ireland could actually? We just get a, get a quick vote on that. Like, uh, we're going, going to have a vote, vote, are we? We're going to <laughs> yeah. have a referendum. So tell me, if there was a referendum in the morning, how would it go? Yeah, it's it's something I've I've often thought about, and I I think Tom hit the nail on the head there when he said, from an Irish perspective, that Brexit has to get done, because at, at this stage, really, just let them off, you know, because um, they they want out, so. I mean, but how do you think they would vote in Britain? Yeah, uh, it, it's something that I mean the the country is divided. Um, you know, it's, it's it's kind of strange, really. But I I think if if I was an English voter that had voted Remain, I would probably vote for Leave at this stage. Really? Yeah. You know, so I actually believe that if there was another referendum, that it would be lost uh, from the point of view of membership. Yeah. Okay, and Derek. I, I can't understand this at all because I'm old enough to remember that they fought long and hard to become part of the European economic yep. community That's right. back in the... And indeed Churchill was very Churchill. much in favour of it. Uh, 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 and yeah. de Gaulle was the sticking very point. He, it, yeah. he wouldn't yeah. let England in at all. He yeah. kept them out for and years. Kept us out as well. and, and they got in. Yeah. But in, in the meantime... Uh, life has changed for all of us. We, we, we're now living in a, a market-driven society, whether we like it or not. Mm, uh, and uh, it, it's the financial sector that, that we have here up in Dublin, <coughs> uh, uh, where we've got a lot of money, a lot of billions of uh, euros pass through, uh, uh, and not, some of them are not taxed, which it, which is a, a sticky uh, issue for a lot of people. That'll be another program, Derry. Hmm? Say that again? That'll be another program. Another program on that, sure. But uh, it, it, the, the whole issue of Brexit is, is that we're damned if we do and we're damned if we don't because people, some people want to leave because they think that they'll do better without Europe and others are fully convinced that we're so dependent on Europe now yeah. that if we leave, we're all going to fall down dead, right. you know? So it, it's it's. So 50, how do you see it's it going 50, 50. if there's a vote? 50 I, 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 I shudder to think that... that uh, by by leaving uh, uh, and ending up with uh, with a guy like Boris in charge, mm. that England, uh, well, UK, should we say, England might do better, but the rest of the UK uh, uh, probably will. Uh, will uh, I mean, I have a nephew and a niece working in in, 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 the, in the health system over there, and, and they're just dreading what what what's yeah, likely to happen yeah. to the NHS because okay. that, that's a big issue. That's there. a big yeah. issue. The NHS, of course, an issue of course. For us as well, and it should be a huge issue in Northern Ireland. Absolutely. I'm going to ask you, Mike. What's your opinion? Because I mean, we, opinion. we seem to have consensus <coughs> that probably not a lot would change in a okay, referendum. Okay. Well, I think it would change, and I think it's it's an interesting one. <coughs> I think that an awful lot of younger voters are registering, right? And there's an awful <coughs> excuse my, my my voice. Um, there's a big big push from the Liberal Democrats. I think if there was a referendum, that it would be carried that they would want it to stay in. I think Remain would win. <coughs> but mm. I actually think that Boris Johnson is going to get a majority. So that's an interesting So that's not going to happen. Mm. Yeah. So it's a bit of, bit of we're, we are sort of kind of asking a bit of hypothetical yeah. stuff and I, here. And I think actually yeah. the, the, none of the things that actually caused the, caused the referendum, I suppose, to go that way have really been dealt with. Um, and they're all of the social issues. And none of them have been dealt with. No. That people have continued to feel f to feel sidelined on anything that matters to them around their health service, around education. Also, particularly, is a huge issue in the UK. And so that that for me is one reason why I see it there wouldn't be much change. Um, you would like to think that it would be different, and we always hope that the young people will come out. But yeah. actually, it's not really all that long since the last referendum. There aren't really that huge number of, of, of people who have come of age in that mm. time. So Do you think though that they might have kind of seen it as a mistake they didn't vote the first time? I think I think so but I think that that, that works both ways like w one of the great hopes for, for the UK election is that people see in the polls how well the Conservatives are projected to do and that will force them out of their homes yeah. to vote to change that but you know it, if if it's very very close actually that forces everybody out of their homes yeah, yeah. and that would be the way that i think that the referendum would go could, uh, could i just say we'll say if you take the irish referendums and we we we'd be good at referendums okay yeah, certainly <laughs> have enough of them or bad yeah. depending no, on your point of view. Well, yeah. but i mean if you get the referendum the 60 40 
I mean, the sixty forty referendum result that puts a that put that that's that question to bed for ten to fifteen years. We have no so Shannon then. Yeah, yeah. Well, but but I mean, what it is is either puts it to bed. Uh, but I think you mean that you have to get sixty percent. No, no, no. I mean, if you get beat, if you if people are pushing for a particular issue, mm -hmm. and if they get beaten by yeah, 60, if there's a wide margin, twenty percent, twenty percent. Yeah. If you look at the the English uh, one, it was probably it's so close that if if there was if it was the other way the vices would still be there to yeah. leave yeah. in other words it doesn't settle the issue it doesn't well. settle the issue yeah. and what it what i see i i i think you're really at this stage you know i think if there was another rerun i don't think there'd be very much difference because i think no. people are worn out with brexit it might slightly go the other way and that would we, that would cause even and, and more well, chaos well, yeah. well that brings that keeps it i really think at this stage they have to they ha they want to go the majority of the people voted to go I think they have to go and you know if it's a case of in 10 years time they say well look this wasn't a good idea you know there might be the new politicians that will come and say look we might be looking at going back yeah. and then and then the thing but but i think you have to it's much yeah. easier to continue to stay and make that decision in 10 years which is i suppose why i think we should have another referendum but i well, don't they should think have another referendum sorry, rather they it's not up to us to make their decision but i think that the reality mm. is that the social problems that exist now for, will continue for the next 10 years whichever way it goes but can i just say one thing and, and i think it's like america you know they might have an economy but do they have a society and that's and that's and that and i think that's the way that england is going to do they'll have a, a you know they will be doing well in london they will be doing poor in sunderland yeah you know I, that's, yeah, that's that's i would that's like to point. bring it back to ireland though because um you know <coughs> there is an argument that in fact the irish government it which is a minority government um has kind of remained without an election We've got a bit of an unstable situation here politically, yeah. but there are those who, who have the view that really the reason that the whole thing hasn't um, gone into an election here is because of Brexit. You know, that people are frightened to sort of, they want to keep point. some sort of continuity going, um, you know, because they, they want to s effectively get Brexit done before there's another general election here. Um, and also there's this instability in the north in the sense that, um, you know, there, there, there's sort of the whole question of United Ireland has uh, raised its head or or Irish unification or whatever you like to call it. Um, the DUP seems to be in a, a bit of a, a lather at the moment. And I mean, the question is how the question I'm really asking um, the panel here is, I mean, how how they do see it politically affecting Ireland. I mean, are we looking at a united Ireland? Are we looking at a situation where the unionists are going to do well in the in the local election, or are we going to see a complete change? I mean, it looks like there's possibly going to be some alliance um, people elected in in Northern Ireland, and there may very well be a majority of MPs who are not unionist actually elected in the, in this election. Mm -hmm. I mean, would that have uh, you know an effect? Maybe in bring Tommy Ruddy in on that one. He's a good student of politics. yeah. Well. Brexit is going to happen, um, I believe, and um, it will precipitate another Scottish referendum because what was it? Was it 62 percent or something voted remain? So, and I actually believe I, I know. Um, well, besides Derek, I, I know a man. Um, he's a Scotsman, been living in Ireland. He's actually moved back to Scotland. Um, but I remember talking to him. Was it about two years ago? And he 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 was living in Ireland, so he didn't vote. But he said he would he would have actually voted to leave the EU. Um, or sorry, he would have no he, no he he voted um, in the Scottish referendum. He voted remain. He wanted Scotland to remain part of the UK. But in the EU referendum, he would have voted um, to remain. And he said if there was another Scottish referendum. Um, he would actually change his vote on independence and I believe another Scottish referendum Scotland will will gain independence mm. and I believe that that will actually precipitate um, um, the talk about United Ireland and Niall you, you were saying there that for the first time in, in these elections there may be a majority of MPs in the north who are actually non-unionists there has been a, a, a kind of a pact they're not <coughs> calling it an official pact but Nigel Dodds, who's actually the deputy um, leader of the DUP, his seat in North Belfast is actually in danger. Um, is it 
What's his first name again? Finucan, John Finucan, is it? Just to go back on that, Tommy, though, you've alluded to it in the press before and I've read some of the articles you've written about Sinn Féin and the fact that they've opted out and copped out because they won't take their seats. They'll take the money for the salaries, but they won't take their seats. So how is that going to change anything? Yeah, well, you see, I, I could never understand. I, I know from going back in history, um, Sinn Féin's reasons for not taking their seats, but I, I could be wrong in this, but I believe one of the factors why they didn't, I know they, they won a seat in Dublin in the last uh, by-election, but I, I believe one of the reasons that they did badly in the local elections, and this is just my own theory, and that they did bad in the European elections, is simply the fact that people down here do not understand why they won't take their seats in Northern Ireland. And some of the votes that were passed in the House of Commons at the time, Sinn Féin could have turned it the other way. Yeah. So, I mean, Northern Ireland at the moment is part of the UK, and personally I would love to see a united Ireland, but I believe some kind of an arrangement has to be done with the unionists. We can't just corral them into a kind of a nationalist uh, Ireland, you know. So, um, yeah, I, I, I believe Brexit. Uh, w one of the things, in there was an excellent interview that David, uh, about David Cameron, an excellent programme about him. I think he took part in them. Yeah, he did. He, he took part in himself. And uh, he, he said one of his fears is, is that Brexit will lead to the breakup of the United Kingdom. And I believe that that's actually what yeah, will happen. It's becoming closer. It's, it's becoming closer. Yeah. Well, actually, Boris Johnson's deal is the first thing that seems to have united every single party in in, in Northern Ireland, which is quite incredible. I, I actually saw a, a sort of a, a television program recently where we have the unionists <laughs> and everybody else agreeing that they're all against Boris Johnson's deal. So I mean, it, yeah. it's it's quite an interesting dynamic that's going on in Northern Ireland at the moment. And I think you're yeah. quite right about the unionists. It's not a case. I don't think anybody w down here wants to corral, or maybe there's a few people want to corral the, the unionists into a united Ireland, but I don't think that's the, the overall view. But might it happen that it, it actually happens by accident? I mean, if we see a situation where, um, you know, Scotland, for example, mm. breaks away from the rest of the UK, that'll kind of make it almost untenable to keep... Um, I still think the, the, it, it's still a long way off. Uh, it, it's the ideal situation. Give us years, Derek. We How would, many years do you uh, think? I mean, I, I honestly... Your lifetime, I, I, I my lifetime. Say, it won't be in my lifetime anyway. Uh, I haven't got that much longer to go. I know, Derek. You'll be collecting money off Michael D, no worries. 20 years at least. <laughs> but uh, the, 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 uh, it, it, it is the way to go. It's going to come. It has to come. It's the right thing to do uh, as... This is Scottish independence. American, uh, yeah. Scottish independence or United Ireland? The, the United Ireland. It, mm. it, 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 it's, it, it's and why do you think it's the right thing, I, uh, Derek? I just think that it, it was the wrong thing to do to divide the island in the first place. But then, you know, I, I had nothing to do with that. No. But uh, I don't think uh, you were even born then, Derek. No, <laughs> so we can't blame Derek. Can't blame Aaron Tashke. None of us were. But uh, uh, from, from the standpoint of this country, Ireland, the Republic, uh, to me, it makes common sense that we should regain uh, the whole island, and that would make a, a, this country. Do you not think, Doug Derek, with the NHS, which you discussed, and, and a lot of people would say the NHS is a far superior health system to what we have, that people in Northern Ireland. It's want struggling. To to I mean, you know, in the north, uh, 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 there are people living, li leaving from this country to get their operations in the north because they can't get them here. So, you know, naturally, it's, it's a benefit. Area. Uh, that we're able to do that through the, through the system, but that's through the the, the European <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, element in that. You see that you can you can be paid uh, uh, to get your operation in the north if you can't get it done here, <coughs> and I might be a candidate for that myself. Uh, mm. I was reading this morning about a fellow that uh, had his hernia fixed in the north. I have a hernia that needs fixing, and I'm on the waiting list. And I'm on the well, I hope Simon Harris list. is listening in this morning. Maybe he can so help us out, Simon. What Simon Harris would want to <laughs> hop on, you know, but. Uh, uh, no, coming back to the North and, uh, and, and the Republic, it, 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 most, I want to say most people, many people would think that it is the ultimate uh, political uh, coup would be that we would uh, unite the island. And I'm not sure they would, Derek. I'm not saying a majority, I'm saying okay. that there are some, many, yeah. uh, and there are many, I'd say. Yeah. But there are also a lot of people that would be worried yeah. about the consequences of that, because that might reintroduce... Uh, all of the enmity and, 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 and the 
uh, social uh, uprest and uh, unrest, uh, uh, and we, which we all remember. Absolutely, it's, it's all too clearly. It's, it's certainly within my lifetime. It's only a. Uh, and that's that's a good point ago, about yeah. history in our schools that they try to dumb it down for a few years and people forget the past very quickly. Yeah, and and, and history and, and and people wanted to take history out of the curriculum. Uh, a, a huge mistake and geography yeah. as mm. well. And I mean, th these whole things of social history and social geography, it, it's so important that we don't forget and we don't forget what happened when the the, the, the kind of thing that's happening now, where we <coughs> see a, a rising right wing capitalism. Uh, re-establishing itself Absolutely. in Europe. You know, in and what about the nuclear option? What about going back <laughs> into the into the Commonwealth, Jerry? What about Ireland going back into the Commonwealth? Well, I, I read those letters. In That's the, the nuclear Ireland. option, well, is for, it? For 40 years since I've lived here, I've seen right. these letters from the odd time uh, surface in the Irish Times. Uh, um, the Commonwealth uh, is, 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 is dead. It, 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 the two words, common and wealth, yeah, don't that's apply true. anymore that's true, because yeah. the, 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 the <coughs> England's history, uh, the UK's history, and okay. uh, it, 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 the spread of its imperialism uh, and uh, Robin yeah, and it is, it is countries of their resources. It is noticeable <laughs> that you know the Queen is not getting any younger, no more than the rest of us, Derek. But when she's gone, you know, when she's gone, when is she's Canada such going a great to remain? Family around her, Neil. I'm mm? sure there's no problem. Well, continuity. <laughs> <laughs> with her, with the there's no the problems below. The family yeah. she has yeah. around her, as my wife says, they're a dysfunctional family, and um, we all know that. Yeah. yeah. One black sheep there. Uh, Only uh, one. Uh, <laughs> no, but at the moment, it would be hard to see, though. I mean, at the moment. The Queen is the head of state in Canada and yeah, yeah, yeah. I think New Zealand yeah, and Australia. Did you mention Malta earlier? I don't know. No, I, well, I, I don't know. She's, but she's the head of many, uh, head of state in a number of countries. I mean, it's hard to see that continuing beyond her oh. reign. Do you know? Could I, could I just make a point? And a um, very learned woman said it to me one time. And she's not an old woman now. You know, when her, her father was born, he was a British citizen. When my grandfather was born, he was a British citizen. So it isn't, you know, what it is is the six counties didn't leave Ireland. Yes. It was the twenty-six counties. Yes. It was the twenty-six counties that left England. Do you know? And I mean, you know, when you when you look at it, I mean, all our probably all our grandfathers yeah. uh, were were, um, and you know, <laughs> maybe in some cases fathers. <laughs> you know, they were all we were British citizens up to nineteen twenty-two. So that was that was the start of the breakup of the, of the British Empire. So Tom, what about our exit? Is it possible that Ireland? No, would I think suit? I think I think if um, my view on this is that you know when Brexit goes ahead, you know we go back to Europe and we say you know look you know you've lost one. Yeah, you don't want to lose two. You don't want to lose two. Mm. And I think we need to... Could strengthen our position. In a much stronger position. And I think we need to say is that, you know, mm. you l you better look after us, because they didn't look after us. In relation to the banking crisis, yeah, they, yeah. they threw us under the bus. That was the first. And, you know, I mean, I think the European program is, is you know, it's tent very tentative. It's, you know, probably better, we're better together than apart. But, like, if you start losing one, and, and, and that's why really Brexit, that's why the deal, I mean, I, I think... If you went to the, any English people and said, geez, why won't Europe do a deal? I said, they can't do a soft deal. Because if they do a soft deal, every other country will want it. Yeah, yeah we have three you minutes know. left. Pauline, do you have any views on this before we leave the subject of the North? I suppose what a lot of people forget about the European Union is that, you know, it wasn't, it's not really founded on money. It's founded on, a, you know, a, a, a belief in a better world, one that's based on peace. And all of this talk about either IREXIT or unification is kind of leaving that bit out of the conversation. So I think that there's a fear there unless we address that and we really talk about it. Um, so I think that certainly I don't feel that people are ready for either of those op you know, um, options at the moment because of the fear around it. And I think I, every one of us here remembers the daily reports um, in Northern Ireland and I don't like to bring it back to that all of the time but mm. actually it is it's, it's a hugely important one and until we figure out how everyone in the North can be accommodated in whatever system we're really not it, it doesn't bring us any closer to what we all ultimately want which is peace um, I'm not a huge fan of any type of a border that's my own personal view um, and I I think that the more we're breaking up, coming together, all of these things, it's actually all the exact same problem.
wherever the border exists, there's still a border and it's still keeping us apart um, one against the other. And that will continue unless um, yeah. we address the fundamentals of, of you know, of peace. Yeah, so we're coming, on, on that note, we're coming to the end of the show, Mike. Yeah. Um, so, and Christmas is coming, so this will be our, our last yeah, show before Christmas. Christmas. Message, obviously. So, I mean, um, I, I suppose... You've played it twice, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> you, well, you actually, I was trying to bring in our Facebook groupings and Instagram and all the rest. And I've just got special greetings from a couple of councillors, two new councillors to go over City Council, along with Pauline, of course. Um, Claude Higgins and Alan Cheevers, great supporters of the, of the show. So, uh, obviously, we'll have both of them on in the new year. And maybe our little Christmas message would be the message of time, that if you give one gift this Christmas, give the gift of time to those less well off in the area. That's my okay. message. Okay. Okay. How about the rest of our guests? Or sorry, our guests. Um, wh what would you like to see for Christmas, Tommy? British election or otherwise? Um, I would like to see. I don't think it's going to happen. But regarding the British election, I would like to see a hung parliament, because uh, wow. <laughs> for for the for the simple reason, um, you know, I, as I said at the start of the program, I, I'll finish up and going back to the very start. I'm I'm just fascinated by the whole uh, situation in England. And uh, I, I think it would create, you know, more uh, amusement at a certain level for me. So that would be my wish for it. Um, and, I, and, and, and I think it would sort of give the, you know, what, two fingers to Boris Johnson as well. But will it not just prolong it, Tommy, again? Hmm? It'll just prolong the state of affairs. Yeah. Some say it's the best reality TV show in, in town, you know. Yeah. It's, it's one or Brexit. Even better. Well, Brexit or, or I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. I'm not sure which is which is the best. Well, I think the Christmas message we all have to issue is, is one of tolerance because mm. we, we, we didn't discuss it at, at all today, and I'm surprised that we didn't, is the issue of racism and the issue of uh, migrant uh, migrants, uh, which is one of the big uh, UK problems they have. We will come back to that, uh, Derek. We're not going to open to up that. But tolerance do you have a is the thing, you see. Yes. Tolerance. Derek, yeah. we'll come back to it, we promise you. Well, I suppose Christmas message from my perspective is, you know, if you could have health for people as much as you could, really, you know, because that's, in the end of the day, you know, they all say health is wealth. And, you know, th we have a we have an unhealthy society and we have a, you know, an imba you know society that's it's not in, you know, there's, there's not, in not in tune, completely out of tune. And, uh, no, you'd hope for them in in years to come you know that it would get better that we'd close the gaps that's what i'd like to see Polly? i suppose I was, we're, we're probably too close to christmas really for all our christmas wishes to come to come true at this stage um a deeper connection and a, a more um healthy community life where people <coughs> aren't isolated um and I, I think brings in a lot of those aspects but that's really my vision for the future and therefore my hope for Christmas and for the new year. Okay, before we go, can I just mention our, our brilliant production team. First of all, my co-host Neil Burlicon for his great patience and knowledge. <laughs> um, Aaron Hassan, who's joined us recently, Adam Grant and Rachel Noonan, who can't be with us today. So um, I'd just like to thank them all for all their work during the year. We've had eight And programs. thank you, Mike, for your, your great contributions as well. And, and the great jumper. Thank you. Well, I just want to say a League United for promotion. <laughs> That's my Christmas wish. <laughs> Great. So I, I think we'll end it there. And uh, just, just to say thank you to all our panel for joining us here today. And thank you to everybody who's supported us right throughout um, Galway Politics Live. And looking forward to 2020. Absolutely. Okay. Well, well, we do look forward to Brexit.